War entered my childhood world, not with the blasts of rockets and bombs, but with my father's footsteps as he walked through the hallway, passing my bedroom toward his. I heard the door open and shut with a soft click. I slid off my bed, careful not to wake Radana in her crib, and snuck out of my room. I pressed my ear to the door and listened. Are you all right? Mama sounded concerned. Each day before dawn, Papa would go out for a solitary stroll, and returning an hour or so later, he would bring back with him the sights and sounds of the city, from which would emerge the poems he read aloud to me. This morning, though, it seemed he came back as soon as he'd stepped out, for dawn had just arrived and the feel of, of night had yet to dissipate. Silence trailed his every step like the remnant of a dream long after waking. I imagined him lying next to Mama now, his eyes closed as he listened to her voice, the comfort it gave him amidst the clamor of his own thoughts. That is, just so you can get an idea, the very first paragraph of In the Shadow of the Banyan. Okay, this is uh, the book for the International Reads Book Club this month. I picked this up at the very beginning of the month and I pretty much read it in three or four days. This book is fantastic. I really don't know what else to tell you. It's really a story about a young girl whose name is, I think her name is Rami. And she's seven years old in the beginning of the book. And this is basically telling the, the historical events of uh, Camb Cambodia when it gets taken over by the Khmer Rouge. And wow. Okay, the, the book is basically set up where you get introduced to her family in the beginning of the book. So maybe the first few chapters you get to know who her different family members are and then quickly you are propulsed into the activity of a systematic identifying and making disappear all of the intellectuals or um, you know people who performed you know artists and musicians teachers people who are of uh, some kind of wealth, all of these people are being orchestrated out of society. So the Khmer Rouge was using a very harsh, strict Marxist uh, uh, philosophy. So basically what they were doing was they were starving the population, forcing them to work, and getting rid of all of the intellectuals or people that had money or any kind of uh, cultural value to Cambodia before. Now, Remy's family is a particular family because they are a royal family in Cambodia. And on top of that, her father not only is a prince, but he is also a writer. He writes poetry. And people pretty much know who he is. I'm not going to go any further than that. If you really want to read the book, I suggest you read it because what you will see is how this regime took over this country and starved its population to death, killed its population off. And let me tell you the way that this woman goes about writing this story is absolutely remarkable because it is not a systematically harsh, brutal um, storytelling because it's told from the eyes of a seven-year-old. Rami is seven years old when this all begins, which is right in the middle of the moment of childhood that should be the most uh, fruitful and, and joyful and carefree and suddenly uh, she her, her childhood turns into something completely different. Now the thing that makes it interesting is like I said the writing style as you heard at the beginning is fantastic writing style. The story reads very quickly and what she does is she insidiously shows you what this regime is about. And she does it in a way where things sneak up on you. Just when you're starting to get comfortable in thinking that 
you know, things are going to be okay. Boom! She strikes you with something else just devastating. And that is the thing that impressed me the most about the story was the honest, well descriptive and insidiousness of this entire incident that happened to this country. How this went about and she really does it in the writing style. With the writing style she emulates what the people are going through. The fact that these people don't even know what's happening to them but suddenly they are whisked away from their homes, separated from family members, made to behave like they weren't behaving before, made to do, you know, hard labor, made to eat very little food, but do very hard work. And all of this while people are being tortured, beaten, hung, raped, you know, what have you. All this is going on over the masquerade of the camaraderie and the communist philosophy you know, Khmer Rouge. If you don't know that much about this particular historical event that happened in Cambodia, the Killing Fields, the story of uh, In the Shadow of the Banyan will give you a very good idea about that. It's written in a very fictional way, so it's not like you're reading a history book at all. It's very well worthwhile reading. It's only, I think it's only like maybe 410 pages, I think. Let me just check that. Yeah, it's 410 pages. Vatty Ratner is the writer. And what I can tell you about Vatty Ratner is that when she comes to the United States, she, you know, goes and gets educated. She became, I think she was summa cum laude or magna cum laude from like uh, one of the big uh, Ivy League schools like Yale or something like that. So she's extremely brilliant. But the writing is so fantastic. I mean, to say that this is someone who is writing English as a second language is absolutely phenomenal, I find. Uh, you know, you, you won't read any better than that. Some people may find that this book was um, heavy going, a little depressing. Yeah, there were parts that were depressing, but I found that I, you know, persevered on because I really wanted to know what was going to happen to this young girl and her mother and I wanted to know a little bit more details about the life during this takeover by the Khmer Rouge because it's not something that we talk a lot about in American history classes unfortunately but I learned more about that when I came to live here in France and so this when I saw this book was up for the International Reads uh, book club on Goodreads I said oh I gotta read this one because I want to know more about it. Yeah, fantastic read. If you haven't picked it up, pick it up. If you're thinking about pick it up, picking it up, pick it up. It's really worth it. And I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. It's a fast read and you will learn a lot of things about the, the, the difficulty of the time period during the Khmer Rouge takeover in Cambodia. That's all I have for you today. I hope you're having a great day. Today, not so good. As you can see, the lighting is kind of off because it's constantly cloudy and it's kind of cold because you see I got my scarf on. Okay, I'll be back with a review of The Enchanted. Bye-bye. Mm.